Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we're doing something slightly different. We have genuinely finished our Parthia campaign now, so what we're going to do is a bit of a faction ranking. I'm hoping to do this with all my Total War videos, my Total War series. So if you want to check that Parthia campaign out, please do in the description. It's great. We basically ended up conquering nearly all the world, and we're doing a live stream to conquer the rest of it. Uh, and yeah, what we're going to be doing is ranking Parthia, looking at Parthia, giving you a bit of tips and tricks if you are new to playing Parthia. And it's going to go like this. So first of all, we're going to rank the starting position and the difficulty. Then we're going to look at the building roster, then the unit roster, then a few tips and tricks. And then we'll give you the overall rating. I really like Parthia. You can also check my ranking video out where I ranked every single faction in Rome Total War. But first of all, let's start by looking at the starting position of Parthia. Now, the starting position is... It has swings and roundabouts, basically. First of all, it is pretty bad, I've got to say. it's You are not in a great position to start the game. Although these two regions are supposedly connected, this is how long it takes your spy to get there. This is how long it takes your armies to get there. Three turns between those two regions. And of course, these two regions, Campus Sarkai and Alsakia, are only connected via the sea. Now, you have this boat at the start of the game if you do want to bring some troops down. And I would highly recommend that because you start with a decent army. So in terms of your cities, um, Susa is a minor city, which is great. Adamanish, uh, not Adamanish, Alsakia is a large town and Campus Saka is a large town. So you do genuinely start with some reasonably large cities. 4,600 at Campus Saka, 3,600 at Asakia, 6,300 at Susa. So a decent population um, to start with. But the cities are just so spread out and so separate that basically you are fighting on three front fronts right at the start of the game. So you are not uh, you don't have a consolidated, strong homeland to defend or assault from. So basically what you're going to have to do is assault from all directions and go on a kind of a three-front war to start with. Now your neighbours, up at Campasaka, it's the Scythians. Down here, you have a rebel territory here, but then it's the Armenians. And down here, you are neighbouring the Seleucids. And Egypt will probably come and take this land relatively quickly. So, what you can find yourself in is a three-front war very early on. Now, do you have the troops to deal with that? Now, I would argue that yes, you do. This army here, com uh, commanded by our Sarkis, very strong. Two units of cataphracts, extremely strong unit. And horse archers will get onto the unit roster very soon. But then you have your two slingers that I would recommend you take along to man siege equipment and destroy everyone else with your extremely strong cavalry. And Asaki's is general's bodyguard unit. The eastern general is very good. Melee attack, 13. Total defense, 16. Not hugely brilliant, the uh, defense. Only 6 armor. However, they fire javelins and then they charge. So you can actually do some very decent damage with these guys. Same up here. You have this army with horse archers and fraotis. Uh, and you have a peasant here. And the peasant is basically just to keep Campus Sarkai happy. But as you can see, if you move that army out of Campus Sarkai, you have to bring it down to low just to keep it on 70%. So Campus Sarkai is a major issue early game for you because it's so far away. If we look at these settlement details. Uh, distance capital, minus 65%. I believe you can only go up to minus 80% with that. So it's not too far away but because of the distance between Alsakia which is your capital at the start of the game and Campus Sarkai they will be very unhappy for quite a while so I would recommend taking a public order bonus here probably the shrine to Zoroastra when you upgrade it start taking the secret police the execution square and secret police uh, sort of regions thing to note as well Alsakia doesn't start with walls so you probably want to get those in straight away if you believe you're going to be attacked uh, and Susa. Susa has a decent army again. But again, you probably want to leave a peasant behind. If we take the army out. See, Susa is also reasonably unhappy. But it can survive with one peasant. The same up here in uh, Campus Sarkai. You can still survive with one peasant. Uh, but yes. 
as I say, you have three regions very spread out and you will be attacking enemies straight away. Now, the one benefit that you have is that you will probably be able to take Babylonia, which I believe is another city. And if you come across here, you can defeat Armenia very quickly. The one issue with Armenia is they also start with reasonably strong armies. Armies with heavy spearmen and cataphracts as well. So your cataphracts will take a beating if you don't use them correctly against the Armenians. So you want to use your horse archers as effectively as possible. Now in terms of the difficulty, a lot of people believe Parthia is a very hard start. It even says so on the um, when you're selecting factions map. Uh, and I would also agree with that because your economy at the start of the game, as you can see, is pretty trash. Minus 763 we're losing per turn. And that's without even taking this army out. If we take this army out, minus 865. If we take these guys out, minus 865 still. Okay, my, yeah, minus 865 right off the bat is not great. Uh, on top of that, you're going to have to, you know... You're not the same as Romans, so you don't want to get up to a huge city straight away. If we bring all these up to a very high tax rate, uh, these guys say we leave, pretend they're a peasant. We can we can only keep those guys on normal, and of course Campus Sarkai has to be on low. So you can't really leverage your tax rate early on to get your economy going. That means that you are forced into being aggressive. If you'd play defensive as Parthia, in fact... You are crazy. You cannot play defensive as Parthia. Now, you do have a diplomat here. I would recommend going and speaking to Armenia, getting map information and trade rights, because even for a couple of turns before you declare war on them, trade rights will be valuable. And then probably popping down here and seeing whether you can get trade rights with Egypt. Once you do have this uh, Katias, I believe it's called, once you do have Katias, you can start getting then trade rights through the Mediterranean because your trade rights will come through um, these straits here. So early on, you are backed up against the wall. The only benefit I would say early on is, well, there's actually two. Reasonably developed settlements, that's good. Second thing is that you are backed up against this side of the map. So although you're going for a three-front war straight away... Um, you can't get enemies coming from off the map, obviously. So that is one slight benefit that might uh, that comes into play uh, later on when we give it our scores. Now, on top of this, um, what would you do? I believe in our Parthia campaign, we brought this, these guys down to our Sarkia so that we could beat Armenia quickly. And I would recommend doing that rather than going after Scythia straight away. Uh, place some watchtowers out here if you can. And you will be able to see Scythia going for a long way off. Look, they'll take them three turns to get to your settlement from when you see them here. And what you can do is then recruit horse archers. And if they siege you down, just send your horse archers out. Kill as many troops as you can with your horse arch, small horse archer contingent. Retreat back inside the city. Leave the battle. And then... Next turn, do the same thing, and then the same thing again until they either decide to assault or you defeat them. So, yes, reasonably hard start. I would say very difficult start. Lots of enemies that you could get to war with very quickly. Um, the problem is, if you try and focus just on one and you send these guys up from Susa, it's very likely that one of the others will attack you anyway. Scythia is a lot less likely to attack you because they have certain rebel settlements around them that they want to take first of all so maybe focusing on Scythia last is the best thing to do on top of that they have the worst lands out of these guys these guys have decent settlements to take and that is the one kind of benefit to your starting position you aren't starting in the middle of Gaul where you know all around you is just towns and villages and um, they are re reasonably developed settlements so that's one big benefit so Let's uh, hop over to the campaign map of, map of my Parthia campaign and we will look at the building and the unit roster. So we are back here guys and as you can see we are, have been ravaging everyone. Um, we're about 120, 110 turns in, something like that. One thing to note though guys is although we are 110 turns in, our Saki has still not upgraded to a huge city. The same with Susa. And I've been keeping them on low tax rates since we got our economy stable. Okay, that's on normal. 
That's probably an oversight for me. Kampa Starkai is even bigger than Susa though now, which is surprising. See, Seleucia is not even a huge city. But then again, we haven't been prioritizing population growth as much as I would uh, if I was the Romans. So, let's look at one of our huge cities. Probably Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee. And we'll look at our building roster. Building roster for the Parthians is generally pretty decent. You get a full set of walls. And the walls now in um, Remastered give law and happiness. So they are actually worth building now rather than just acting as defences. Now the big thing that you will notice here is that you only get two sections of infantry barracks. And that is because you have basically no infantry. And three sections of catapult of uh, the ranged things you get the archery uh, you get the practice range archery range and catapult range and you don't get any ballista all that sort of stuff you only get uh, catapults slingers and archers uh, but we'll talk about the unit roster late you do however get full access to stables if we look at say Carthage you will see that these stables here over here in Carthage allow you to get war elephants which is excellent in terms of your stables, your first level of stable allows you to recruit horse archers. So that is a massive bonus for this building roster because you only need a large town to recruit horse archers. It would be so OP if they allowed that to be town, but that would be too OP in the game, definitely. So the large town being able to recruit horse archers, you can practically recruit horse archers nearly every, everywhere in the world. And a lot of places that you take, you'll be able to retrain your horse archers. So that is a big, big bonus because if you're playing Parthia right, you will be basically just using horse archers and nothing else. Um, you do get full access to the foundry, which will graze everything by two, which is awesome. Obviously, you need a huge city for that, though. And there aren't many of those to go around when you're playing as Parthia, honestly. Um, as, we, as we saw over here, your enemies that you take... Take Seleucia, which is already a minor city at the start of the game, but still even, not even a huge city. That might be testament to how quickly we have conquered, though, and not necessarily uh, the slow population growth. But you can see that these places, not a huge amount of population growth, but then again, that is with a third level tier crop rotation. So population growth is hard to come by with your building roster. Um, let's look at law. So... Law, as we've spoke about before, is one of the most important modifiers in the whole game because it reduces corruption and increases your happiness. So law is brilliant to get. And the one big benefit of the Parthian um, tree, which a lot of Eastern factions get, is you get the execution square and you get the secret police HQ and then you get the secret police network, which increase your law hugely, hugely. Like, really, really well. It's fantastic. So, that is a big bonus to the Parthian uh, building tree. Now, in terms of ports, you also do get the three levels of ports, which allows you to train reasonably good ships. Now, that obviously is not very uh, historically accurate, but it allows you to get the Quinkareem, which is one of the strongest ships, unless you are the Scipii. But most of the game, you'll just be going with Byremes, which is fine. You don't really need anything else. But the good thing with this is you get three trade fleets available with the dockyard. So if you are upgrading your ports, you can get even more trade fleets. On top of this, you can get the trader, you can get the markets all the way through, increasing trade even more. And there's another added benefit is the trade caravan, the spice road, and the silk road. Look at that trade income bonus plus 40%. So if you really want to get your trade going, you can with these later large cities. But as I said, you're probably only going to be seeing minor cities early game for a long, long time. A long time until you get to Memphis, until you get to Alexandria and Thebes, or you get to Rome, or maybe some of the Greek cities. But by the time you're in Greece, they probably haven't upgraded that much. Maybe into large, no huge cities really. Um, so yeah, you are a lot about trade. But the big, big negative that you have here is that you only are allowed to build roads you can't build paved roads and you definitely can't build highways um, so that is a big decrease in your trade anyway um, so these are kind of 
offset by that fact that you can only get roads everywhere. And when you're late game, so late game we were recruiting a lot of elephants up here in Susa. And trying to get them across to our battlefields in Greece and North Africa. Um, and it just takes ages, guys. Because all I wanted to do is walk them across to Antioch. Because Antioch wasn't that upgraded at the time uh, to build elephants. Um, and it takes... Look at this. We'll see. We don't have elephants, but we have peasants. Look at how many turns. That's five turns, right, to, to get to the ships to then go. So you're talking a ten-turn wait. If they were highways or paved roads, you'd be moving a lot, lot quicker. So that road, um, those these trade upgrades, excellent in coastal cities um, because of your ability to have your coastal trade routes. But because you don't have roads on your inland cities, your trade will suffer slightly, um, which is a big negative. You do also get access to the academy, which provides even more law. So you're very law heavy. Um, and of course, new traits and followers, which is excellent. So good in your capital where a lot of your young people will be coming of age and a lot of your adoptions will complete. Um, and religion, of course, you go with Zoroastra, which again is massive on law. Look at that. It's law and happiness, but you don't get any options. So your, your religious options are uh, adversely impacted. Well, let's have a look at Rome and see what have I built here in terms of law. Uh, so we've built, we're building uh, the Zoroastra. Have we built the, oh, we haven't built the execution square. I'm wondering, is there somewhere that's built the execution squares? Yeah, so you've built a bit of an execution square and quite a few of the temples. And let's have a look at how your law is doing. So, yeah, look at the law, 40%, um, which means that corruption is 328 uh, which is still quite high, but you can get your law up to probably around um, 100%. If you, should we add them all up? We'll add them all up right now, in fact. So if you get, we'll 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 go the, this level. We'll go for a large city, 20% law from that, 10%. Uh, so that's 30%. Uh, you can get the walls, which add. 5%, so 35%. The academies, 45 And this, so 60% law you can get at large city, which is incredible, guys. That is really good. So that is a big bonus to the Parthian, uh, Parthian tree. You can get law everywhere. But generally, by the time you're so far away, I moved my capital to Antioch, by the way. But by the time you're so far away from your capital, Law won't really matter because, as you can see, we have 1.3 million gold, basically. Um, so, law early game, though, very strong, and you can get it very strongly. Um, religious options, not so much. So, I'd say the building roster for the Parthians is mixed. You have good trade options in coastal cities. You have a good amount of law, but then again, you don't get upgraded roads, um, and you don't get many barracks, of course, because we'll go onto the unit roster. So let's have a look at the unit roster, shall we? Probably Antioch is the best trading, uh, best recruitment hub right now. And of course, you only get two units of infantry if you exclude peasants. The Eastern infantry, which are generally absolutely atrocious, guys. You only want to use these in the absolute worst position that you can. And reflected in that, they have more soldiers than, say, the Hillman unit, which only has 80. They have the same amount as peasants. But I would still recruit peasants to go in cities uh, because um, these guys are more expensive. 150 uh, and 330 compared to 100 and 120. So, yeah, peasants are definitely a lot better to keep in cities. So these guys are pretty much useless. Compare them to the peasants. Peasants have no morale. Three melee attack. Same as the Eastern Infantry, three melee attack. But they at least have two morale. Three defense, ten defense. So, yeah, peasants are a lot worse, but the Eastern Infantry are practically useless. I would not recommend using them. Now, the Hillmen, they even have worse defense than the Eastern Infantry, mainly because of the shields. The Eastern Infantry have five shield, which makes them good against archers, but that is it. Four morale, which is not good, and five melee attack, which is also pretty trash. They can hide in long grass. 
bonus fighting cavalry because they're spearmen. Apparently they do have good stamina and they're fast moving. So those are two small benefits that you have. Um, however, if you look, let's have a look at some of my armies out here. What infantry? Yeah, by the late game, what you want to be doing is putting archers as your infantry in there. Uh, not the hillmen. Because the archers can actually do some damage if you get them on enemy walls. This one has two units of Samnite mercenaries just for fun. Um, where are some other armies? These guys do have two units of hillmen. Um, these guys, two units of hillmen again. Uh, these guys are a bit of a mishmash because that army is a mishmash because Germania attacked us. Uh, we do have one more army though. Yeah, you've got a mishmash as well. Uh, but basically, what you want to be doing, guys, with your armies is this. This is a late game army. Filling it with horse archers um, and whatever else. If you want some cataphracts and elephants, stick them in there as well. And two units or four units of infantry. Uh, basically, just to man siege equipment. The one issue you might find, though, late game is when you go up against a walled city like Rome, for example... Uh, getting your troops onto the walls is actually harder than you think if they all man the walls. If they man the walls and you've got two units of archers, it's not going to work. So basically what you want to be doing um, in that case is taking as many field battles as possible. Because let's continue looking at the unit roster. Masana, no, you're not good. Carthage, what can you... you Carthage can basically recruit everything. Um, apart from archers. And slingers. So, your starting cavalry, as we said in a large town, is the horse archers. This, guys, is your secret weapon. The stats don't look brilliant. Look, four morale, not great. Two total defense, two def which is just defense skill. They have no armor and shield, so they're very susceptible to arm archers themselves. Um, three melee attack, which is trash, uh, but seven missile attack. And they have 40 missiles each. Missile range of 120, quite close. But these guys are the most OP unit in the game, I promise you. They only cost 110 to recruit, which is less than the Eastern Infantry and nearly as much as the Peasants. Like, they, they are so good, guys. 40, 40 missiles of 7 missile attack will take down a lot, a lot of troops. So trust me when I say that these guys are the most overpowered unit in the game for campaigns. Not saying they're overpowered for, uh, for uh, multiplayer, but for campaigns, because of their cost, only 440 um, upkeep. If we go up to the Persian infantry, they're nearly double, 790 upkeep. They're also very cheap to recruit, which is great, but they have almost double the upkeep. And on top of that, one th they only have 30 missiles, so they have three quarters the missiles they of the others. Same missile attack. The one big difference, though, when we go up to Persian Cavalry, as you can see, they're actually good cavalry. They're not just horse archers. Their morale is 8, which is excellent. Defense of 10 and melee attack of 9, which is pretty decent for a hybrid unit. Um, 7 missile attack, the same as the horse archers. But I would only really recommend going up to Persian Cavalry, guys, when you have... Um, when you have a really stable economy and you're late game. The only reason I kind of use them now rather than the horse archers, is because it speeds up battles because it allows you to actually charge the enemy rather than just shoot them to death constantly. Um, but then we go to the cataphracts, which are your melee cavalry option. But as I say, the Persian, casual, uh, Persian cavalry is a melee cavalry option as well. They are not a bad option. But these guys are absolute beasts. Morale of 8, armor piercing secondary weapon, so they have a 7 melee attack in their charge, with a charge of 9, which is amazing. And then when they change to an 8, um, when they get into actual melee, they change the maces, and they break through all their armor. So they are actually, cataphracts are cataphract killers, really, you could say. Their total defense 23 is crazy. The one issue that they have is they are incredibly slow. <laughs> They're not almost as slow as infantry units. Genuinely, they are very slow. So using these guys is more for an all-out Boom, huge charge that just destroys the enemy line. So they are good though. They are a very good unit. And as you can see, 190 recruitment cost is not much. Although their upkeep cost is high, 940. Um, but yes, 
You also get the cataphract camels, which are exactly the same in stat as the cataphracts, as you can see. But they are camels. Uh, so apparently they're good against horses, but guys, you never recruit these. Camels are absolute trash in this game. And for some reason, I don't know why they are in the tier above. As you can see here, this allows you to recruit cataphracts. This allows you to recruit cataphract camels. By the time you get huge cities, um, you won't want them. You don't need them, and they're trash because camels are even slower than the cataphracts, who, as I said, are already really slow. So don't, <laughs> don't recruit these guys. They are really trash. Um, and by the time you're at this point in the game when you can recruit them, the only reason you would ever recruit them is to fight enemy cavalry. And who are we fighting now? We're fighting Germania, Gaul. We are still fighting the Scipii, but these are heavy infantry-focused factions. So cataphract camels are practically useless and there's no point in them really being there as your last option because you're never going to be able to recruit them until very late game when you're not going to be fighting any cavalry focused factions. So as I say guys, do not use those guys. They are trash. But the other big, big benefit to the unit roster of the Parthians is the war elephants. Now they're not as, as strong as the um, armored elephants. But these guys are, are obviously just incredibly beastly, incredibly good. Uh, the other benefit that you get with them is if they lose, say, it says 36, but they only have, I believe, um, 12 units, uh, 12 elephants in each one. And each time you use, lose one of these numbers, you actually just lose a person on the back of the elephant rather than an elephant itself. So you can go down to 12 of these guys and still have 12 elephants going so that basically means that you can use these guys quite um, you can expend these guys quite nicely without actually you losing any elephants or at least that was in the original I believe it's still the case here so you can see this guys is 35 rather than 36 and that means they still have 12 elephants they've just lost one person on the back because they're uh, two people on the back of the elephants all the time one firing arrows and one sat on the top so yes of course 12 hit points they've got the special attack bonus fighting cavalry which is very strong if you run these elephants into enemy generals they will shred them like they will kill the general instantly it's it's obscene to watch frankly um, and of course they frighten nearby enemy and they have good morale the one issue is obviously they might, might run a mock but in this campaign i think We've used elephants in a lot of battles, and it's only happened once. And that was charging a phalanx head-on, just because I wanted to see how they did. And they don't do well against a phalanx head-on, guys, so <laughs> don't do that. Um, but yes, these war elephants, they are incredibly, incredibly strong. Now, as I say, your archer options are your slingers, which are fine to man rams, but they are really bad. Missile range of 80, missile attack of 4. Not good. Really not good units. Four defense, three melee attack. Do not use these guys in melee, obviously. And you don't really, because the range is only 80, you hardly get to use these guys in, in missile attack anyway. So, as I say, these guys are trash. The same with your archers. They're not good. Morale of four, which is not good. Only two defense, so they're very susceptible to archers themselves. Um, and that is only defense skill, so yes, they will just die instantly from Archer Fire. Melee attack of 3, missile attack of 7, which is decent, uh, and 30 missiles. But the missile range is only 120, so you do not get any long-range missile options apart from your Persian cavalry, which is very interesting. Your foot archers are worse than your horse archers, so you never use these guys. Never use these guys unless you're using them to man rams like we have been doing here. Um, that really concludes the unit roster. You get your three ships, like most factions. Um, uh, you do get catapults. They are just standard catapults. I do have them in one army, but that was to break down the walls of Rome. Uh, I wonder where these guys have got up to. Are they in here? No. Where have you gone? Have I? Oh, are you at Lily Bime? No. I did have... Oh, there you are. Yes, so this we did have a catapult in this army to break down the walls of these cities because 
uh, as I say, they had infantry mainly in their cities and we weren't waiting for them to sally out. So we broke down the walls, charged in with the elephants and killed as many as we could. It was fantastic. Um, but yeah, that concludes the unit roster, guys. Um, and it's very, very... It's, it's a very good unit roster. It's incredibly overpowered if you know how to use it properly. As I say, the horse archers are your secret weapon. They are overpowered as hell. Very cheap. Very easy to get. And do so much damage. Now, tips and tricks, guys. Basically, uh, it's hard to show you now because these are all late game armies. But early game, what you want to be doing is... I believe over here we have an army that's uh, from early game. Yeah, this is an early game army. As you can see, we've been destroying people so much. I believe this army has been pretty much from turn 30 that we haven't even got any one gold experience yet. But that is because we have just been absolutely shredding everyone. Um, so if you want to get your experience up a bit more, you've got to charge these guys in, give them a bit of adversity, lose a few more troops. Uh, but obviously we weren't doing that. We were just shredding everyone. But as I say, early game, this is what you want your army to look like. I always kind of keep two generals just in case one dies, uh, but that's up to you. You can have one, uh, one or two. Um, fill the rest of your army with horse archers and two to four units typically of infantry for manning rams, siege towers, ladders, etc. Whatever you need to do to get inside the city. So that is a, a perfect example of an early game army that you want to use. And it's still very strong late game. It's been shredding Romans like no tomorrow. Late game, this is the sort of army you want to go for. Now, late game, you do have more melee options with the cataphracts and the elephants. So you can really kind of switch it up. Um, I believe I've got a couple of armies here with a few more melee troops. Okay, maybe not. Uh, these guys? No. Um, will he buy them? See, you can see, yeah, we've got a few more melee troops with this army. But still predominantly horse archers. If you're not using horse archers as part of your guys, you're going to have a tough time because... They are by far your best units. Over here, we were building another melee type of army with a load of uh, cataphracts. Unfortunately, the plague came. So, <laughs> we have brought them out. But unfortunately, these elephants are all starting to die now from the plague, which is very unfortunate. And we can't re retrain them unless we go back to Antioch or over to Carthage. So, pretty annoying. But yeah, late game, you can kind of experiment with your melee troops. As long as you have... A few horse archers and the rest of them cataphracts and only those very few infantry units. That's all that you really need, guys. Um, you can have a full cataphract army and that would smash everyone. So don't be afraid to get the cataphracts involved and get the elephants involved. Because they will just tear people to shreds. Especially these barbarian factions who don't really have an effective counter. Um, so that really concludes the unit roster, guys. So, let's talk about the ratings. Now, I was going to give them an early game rating of 1 out of 5, but then I kind of thought, no, it can't be a 1 out of 5 because... Spain's a 1 out of 5. Um, because, basically, the cities that you can take, as I said, Seleucia is a decent city. You can take that early game. You can come across to Fraspa, which is, I believe, is a large town or a town. It's not a great city early game. But then when you come across to Artax, Sarta, and Catias, they, again, are decent size settlements. I believe a large town and Catias may be a minor city, but they might both be large towns. And then when you come down through Anatolia and into Egypt, you have access to all this rich land when you finally beat Egypt. Egypt's a difficult foe to face, but when you finally beat them... And you've got access to Sinope and Mazaka, which generally this area, okay, you spread out up here. But when you get down into this land, look how many settlements there are in a small area. And they're all pretty decent. So that's why we've bumped them up to two. Very difficult start, spread out, fighting on three fronts. But the, the settlements that you end up do taking are reasonably decent. So that's why we've bumped it up from one to two guys now late game i would say four out of five because you can pretty much have one of the strongest armies in the game with these persian cavalry these war elephants and cataphracts the one issue why it's not a five out of five is the unit rosters first of all not hugely diverse and you will get bored of skirmishing people to death with your horse archers i promise you that on top of that your infantry options are trash 
so basically, when you're assaulting late game, especially the Romans who all have these upgraded walls, it's very hard to take these settlements with the army compositions you have. So tip, guys, is to always take your field battles before you take your sieges. Don't think you're going to cut off the enemy by going and sieging down their cities because you don't want to siege down with the, the uh, army composition that you will be fielding. So take as many field battles as you can. Um, and obviously, as I say, it's very annoying the pathing uh, in this game for the horse archers. I promise you it's, it's annoying inside cities and you can't use them to the full potential. So yeah, down from a five to a four. Now the units, not a hugely diverse roster and no real, um, no real infantry options to speak of. So I've given it a three out of five, uh, just because it's, it's not very diverse, but it is very overpowered. Every every um, every nation that has access to these horse archers is incredibly overpowered, in my opinion, because they are the best campaign unit in the game. In fact, just a quick note: Fariel the Conqueror is the only person in this whole map in my armies that has a gold experience, and that is because he has been campaigning for years <laughs> to get that and look at the army he's been commanding they don't even have gold experience like silver experience most of them yet because they have just been shredding everyone um so that is one kind of thing but yes units three out of five guys uh, very very good units very overpowered but not really a hugely diverse roster and you've got no infantry so assaulting cities is a pain um you're not going to lose very unlikely to lose um, unless you have a mass route of your horse archers because the early game horse archers have terrible morale for morale and they route very easily unless you have a mass route of them you're not going to lose but it's just going to be frustrating and annoying and a bit harder to take cities than it would be with other units now buildings we're going to go for a three and a half out of five so yes three and a half out of five i believe that's fair you get access to a lot of buildings but the lack of roads is really, really kind of uh, destructive for your trading ability and your ability to move troops from the Far East, where you'll mainly be um, recruiting them, over to the war zones in the West. So yes, um, buildings three and a half. On top of that, you only get one um, religious building, which religious buildings give you different options in nearly every faction. Of, um, so Parthia having one is a bit... Uh, disheartening a bit frustrating uh, but yes still you do have very decent uh, building options for uh, your faction and overall then guys it's a 12 and a half out of 20 hard start easy late game these very overpowered units but not much diversity decent buildings again lacking in certain areas so overall guys 12 and a half out of 20 i really enjoy playing parthia i think it's one of the most enjoyable early games you can have because of the challenge and because of um you know a lot of the factions in rome are very infantry focused until you start going east um so you know romans the gauls germanians carthage to some extent you know macedon and greece phalanx focused so playing as with the horse arch is a nice welcome difference uh, and it's definitely worth playing and trying and seeing how overpowered those horse archers are themselves but yeah 12 and a half out of 20 guys which if you're interested that's just an arbitrary score out there and it's an arbitrary percentage 62 and a half percent of arbitrariness strengthness strongness of uh, parthia as a faction um but yeah of course you can check out my faction ranking video for all of um the factions in rome total war you can also check out a video for all the Roman units that I have ranked. I've ranked every single Roman unit in the game uh, as another video. So please check that out. Please subscribe, guys. Please like, comment, all that good stuff. And hopefully I'll see you again on the next video.